okay, guys, you need to treat the world that you live in as if it was a courtroom, okay? Hearsay, when someone says this is what caused this and this is what caused this, that doesn't mean it's proof. I don't care where it come, where you heard it from, whether it's from an ambulance guy or whether it's from a doctor or whether it's from whatever. Anything that you hear from somebody else is not something that you prove in a court of law. Hearsay is not admissible in court. You realize that, right? Hearsay is not proof. You now have to treat everything you read and hear on the internet as if it was in a court of law. Can this article be proven in a court of law to be substantiated? This is where you guys have to start understanding how the law works. And if you don't understand the laws, you'll believe all the stories. And that goes for the anti-vax community. That goes for anyone that's against Jilly Juice. That goes for anyone that reads the internet. Hearsay is not proof. Hey, Jessica. And so that means that, that translates when somebody says that, you know, if you guys believe in Jilly Juice and someone says, oh, Jilly Juice hurt me and everything, that's hearsay. But then someone says, oh, yeah, this tetanus shot caused this milk allergy. But you choose to believe that over somebody said the Jilly Juice caused them an issue. Why are you discriminating? Why don't you, you know, uh, or... Yeah, why are you discriminating? If you're going to believe that this tetanus shot caused a milk allergy, then why wouldn't you believe that this person said that J-juice caused them harm? Do you see what I'm saying? We are discriminatory in what we believe in. And that is huge because I've been a victim of people believing hearsay, which means that which means that if you're going to take a, a an ex, if you're going to take a, a platform across the board that says okay don't believe in hearsay that means everything even in the stuff that you think is right when it comes to politics like what goes on in the Trump world what goes on in the anti-vax pro-vax what goes on in anything whether it's the bible everything so what is proof and you're right Jessica it's not easy to find facts and what is proof? Proof is relative to your belief system. Okay? Proof is relative to your belief system. When you're when you're this person in this elevator and you're moving, do you know if it's gravity or do you know if it's acceleration? You don't know what precipitated this event. So what's the proof? The proof is that you're moving, but how it how it was caused, well, you don't know. But all you know that you're moving, and so you're going to blame, and the proof is going to be that you're moving, and then you're going to make up a story about what has caused this movement. Was it gravity? Was it acceleration? And so this is where now, it, now with the whole thing with this, with the gravity or acceleration, if your whole point is you're trying to stop moving, then you have to figure out that formula that will then counter both gravity and acceleration, okay, which we don't know. But this is like another example of pain, okay? When you have pain relative to your belief system, how are you going to explain it? Is it healing or is it hurting? In the, in the, in the matrix, in the allopathic holistic, pain is hurting. But in J-Juice, pain is healing. But it's still a manifestation based upon um, a belief system. I mean, as far as what you, what you're, how you explain it is based upon a belief system. So the proof is that you're you're in pain. What you what you make the pain mean is whatever it is that you feel that is is what caused it. Now it's a belief system. So there's your proof. So now where's the proof? There is no proof. It's in how you understand the laws, and that's why understanding the law is so paramount. And people don't want to understand the laws; they want to believe all the stories. They want to say, oh, yeah, this ambulance guy said that, you know, when I got a tetanus shot, now I have a milk allergy. Maybe you already had the issue and just another antigen brought in and put him over the edge. And it could have been something else that caused the milk allergy. Maybe he's already had it in his body and that just that extra antigen and whatever, and the antibody tipped the scales. And it wasn't like that tetanus shot did it. It could have been something else. Okay? So... Proof is relative to your perception. When someone asks for proof, hey, well, the proof is all based upon your belief system. 
because you're going to have a manifestation that you're going to have an explanation for, and that's based upon what you believe, whether it's in the matrix or with jelly juice. Now you have two opposing belief systems, and which one are you going to believe? Well, you're going to believe the one that you know most about, which is whatever it is. And then it all depends upon outcome. There's intention, there's outcome. But that's understanding the laws. If you don't understand the laws, and again, you'll believe all the stories. So hearsay is, so when someone tells you something, it is not proof. I don't care if they have a degree. I don't care if they're an ambulance worker. I don't care if they have a billion degrees. There's a bunch of people out there that hold a lot of degrees that say things that have not been exactly proven or it's been proven in the context of their intention. So if you believe in the context of their intention, that's the proof that you want. That's fine. That's your belief system. More power to you. It's not mine. And you can't impose your belief system onto me because I have another theory about pain or something that says the complete opposite. Who's to say that you're right? Who's to say that I'm right? Right? We can't, we can't prove immortality, but we can prove that nutrition, the right nutrition, and all the chemistry contributes to rapid healing. And then there's also proof that prostaglandin hormone that's being inhibited by anti-inflammatory stops the healing process. So right there is the proof. But you have to actually read and understand the laws of the body to see my point of view that is proof of why then I would have this specific theory. But remember, we have people that don't want to read my information or understand. They still want to stay stuck in another belief system. That's their right. It's not up to you to change it unless they see it's important for them to change it. So because someone says something doesn't mean it's proof because you may have a very different belief system that will also be proof to you. And so now it's about belief systems. You can't prove a belief system if somebody, if somebody is wanting to stay in their world. And let's say you say, hey, I'm tired of this world and I'm tired of, of this. I want to see another world and see your proof. Then great. Okay. But I don't want somebody taking somebody's word as if it was gospel. Because that shows you don't have discernment. You're not critically thinking. And you're not allowing and seeing all sides of the issue because you're still stuck in tunnel vision. And when you're stuck in tunnel vision, then there is no learning to be had. Hearsay is not proof. Hearsay is hearsay. There's an intention behind every single statement that's out there. And some of you don't understand what people's intentions are, but you see when you, when you, when you, when you make a, a, an assessment, when you make a snap judgment, when, you make, when it confirms your belief system, then you're, then you're seeing the intention. They have the same belief system as you. So they just basically confirmed what you already kind of, you know, believed in anyways, and you call that proof. So how is that any better than somebody else having the opposite? It isn't. It's just two different belief systems that both have proof relative to their beliefs and their intention and the outcome. If someone believes that people should die, then, hey, then, and they don't mind acquiring all these antibodies, then they don't care if someone says, well, hey, maybe we can, we can play around with immortality and cell regeneration and all that. They're not going to even entertain that because they religiously believe that people should die. Okay, fine. You can't, there's no amount of proof in the world that's going to change someone's mind if they are so staunch in their belief system. There's no amount of proof. You could show them the proof and they would still have, they would still find a way to debunk it. So we are not going for proof. We're not trying to go to a doctor or somebody to substantiate our belief system. There's enough evidence to show on both ends. Because, no, people don't like pain. And eventually, yeah, and here's the thing. With J-Juice, we're trying to take away pain forever. Okay, but, yes, you're going to have to deal with it in the beginning because you have so many mutations. So, yeah, in a lot of ways, pain isn't a wonderful thing. And in the attention of the industry, when you're trying to get a job done and you're trying to maintain every day with your family and your job and your friends and everything else, you don't have time to be in pain. So you need something to then take care of the pain so you can still keep going. But if you're not looking at long term of what this stuff, these protocols are doing to relieve that pain right now, 
then, you know, but, but, but not everybody looks at tomorrow. Not everybody looks at how it's going to manifest down the road because they all want everything right now. So now it's a matter of how are you going to look at the future? What is your proactive way of prolonging your life? What, I mean, there's a whole different mentality when it comes to understanding what pain is. So it's all relative to whatever your intention is. So now I'm putting out a different intention with a potential different outcome. And we are now reintroducing what pain is. It's really not a bad thing. But yes, it's not something that feels comfortable. So they are right. They want to mitigate it, but they don't want to deal with it. And then eventually, they don't want to mitigate it in the right context. Because when you, when you deal with pain in the allopathic holistic world, you are violating the laws of your body. People don't understand that because they're so used to dying that they're okay with death. But now I'm introducing the fact that maybe, you know, death isn't really something we should be entertaining. That we may have to face the pain. So you're going to have a different proof than this other person. So everybody has proof relative to their belief system. Okay? So I'm going to say that the, the vaccines don't cause the death and the issues. People already came into this world with mutations. They already came into this world with 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 uh, antibodies, because why is it that somebody gets a food allergy way down the road, and and and, and there wasn't a vaccine to precipitate it? But it, but hey, they have a they have a fish allergy in their forties. They hadn't taken any vaccines, they hadn't done anything. But guess what? The system when it breaks down, when your body breaks down, those antibodies start multiplying. Okay, because there's no other balancing force to keep them at bay. So whatever that allergy, that food allergy that you have, now came to surface, and you don't know what precipitated that to come to surface versus something else. Remember, your tire test will tell you all the different issues that you have. And I'm wondering if there is an antibody for a milk allergy or a shellfish allergy. I mean, I had, I had, I was, I was allergic to pollen and every springtime I would always be sneezing all the time. So I had an antibody in my body that every time that I was exposed to that specific pollen, whether it's the trees or the grasses, or the acacia trees out there in California, I was always just, my nose was bleeding all the time. I was just inflamed. And that was the curse also in my childhood was the fact that I had all these allergies. Now, I'm sure if they did all the, and they do allergy tests, right? They can see the antibodies of what would cause the inflammation. So I would have this antibody in my body because I somehow the body then figured it was an antigen. So yeah, maybe milk, there's a thing in milk that creates an antigen that causes inflammation. But you keep that, 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 uh, that antibody at bay where it's not multiplying rapidly. It's not going to cause an allergy where when you're exposed to it, it's not going to cause inflammation. Because you have an antibody to fight against it. And then your body is repairing that damage from that, in, from, that in, from that exposure. Okay, so it's like you don't know what exactly caused that because that antibody was probably already there and someone get a tetanus shot it just maybe created more antibodies and lowered their immune system or heightened it or whatever and then there you go now it turns into a a milk allergy so there's so many factors i mean when, when you when you inherit natural immunity from your mom because of breast milk you're taking in all of her antibodies that she's ever acquired in her course of her lifetime. And then everyone else that she has been with as far as sex and as far as the g genetic line, the grandparents and the great grandparents, and all of that. So, so you're inheriting all of these mutations from so many people in your family as well as who they've been exposed to. When they say when you sleep with one person, you sleep with every single person they've ever slept with. That is actually true. Because you're, you're exposed to the antibodies that they've been exposed to or exposed to the antigen that created antibodies. And so when you exchange fluids, whether it's breast milk or sexual fluids, guess what? You're acquiring antibodies. And this is why people get STDs or they get different allergies or they get different mutations. So who are you going to blame now? You're going to blame like the last 50 people that you slept with? And you're going to go and search for and see who has that milk allergy so that you can blame them. Or you can blame the nearest thing like a vaccine. Or you can blame the nearest thing like a chemtrails or the 5G. Or what else can you blame? You'll find, you'll blame Jilly Juice. See, the blame game is so easy because it's all based upon belief system. 
but nobody wants to, to really understand that there's so many factors that contribute to the allergies and the cancer disease and chronic illness that you can't blame any one specific thing. There's so many factors, so many factors. So now you have to realize that you can't come from the blame game. Now you got to come from jilly juice that levels the playing field. When someone blames something, you realize that, the, that you're now looking at their politics. When they're blaming jilly juice, when they're blaming the vaccines, when they're blaming chemtrails, when they're blaming uh, 5G, when they're blaming the politics, when they're blaming the Illuminati, when they're blaming the doctors, when they're blaming the nurses, when they're blaming their, their ex-boyfriend, <laughs> and they're blaming who else? Anybody that blames anybody else, you see the politics. You understand their mentality. Zero personal responsibility. Zero. Because everybody else's fault, it's not their own. So now, now you'll understand when you see somebody blame somebody for something, you realize their politics and you realize that that's not where you need to be. You take part in blaming someone or something for your position in life, you're on that death trajectory. You really are. Because you haven't understood the balancing forces of life and an understanding that death is a consequence. And so when you're believing what people say out there, instead of understanding the laws and then applying them in your life, then yeah, you are taking zero responsibility and you're hopping on a bandwagon because it's trendy, 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 trendy. And I'm so over the trendy people, over it. Where is your responsibility? So that way you actually can exemplify your belief system, happy, healthy, you're not attacking anybody. You are putting boundaries up and you're creating the world that you want to live in. And if somehow somebody's world collides into yours, then you will find ways to protect yourself. Some things are out of your control, some things aren't. For the most part, not everyone's going to have out of control situations unless they put themselves in those situations. The world has a balancing force. There is good and evil in this world because we have a lot of mutated people in this world. And if you see a lot of evilness, then it's up to you to be the good, the, the positive element to counter it. And if you contribute to the negative, then what are you doing? You got to learn how to articulate without contributing to the evilness. But you need a certain amount of good and evil in the body because you got to have a certain amount of negative elements to then repel the things that don't belong in your world. You can't always be good. If you're always good, then you're going to allow things in your life that don't belong. And then that's when people cross boundaries and hurt you and harm you. That that's where I, I get where when someone's like all oh, about love, 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 they have zero boundaries. Zero. When you're all about love, 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 and you don't understand there is a, uh, a need for some negative elements in your life, then you will not know how to create boundaries. And then guess what? You're open to everything and anything and open to suggestion. And then that's how people pass away too quickly or they get damaged because they don't have enough boundaries, enough negative elements to balance out the positive elements. So hearsay is not proof. Understand the laws, apply them, and understand that everything is universal. We live in a world that has the same elements, the periodic tables. We live in a world with, with the same 11 different systems. We have stimulus that has certain manifestations positive, negative manifestations. And then we have life and we have death and reproduction. What constitutes life, what triggers death, and what triggers reproduction? Death is a consequence. What is upset of homeostasis? All of that. And then everybody has a right to their belief system relative to their intention and outcome. And it's not up to anybody to go and impose their belief system on somebody else. Because there's so many factors that contribute to somebody's situation that you can't possibly narrow it to one thing. You can't blame just one thing. It's not just the vaccines. It's not just the chemtrails. It's not just the 5G. It's not, if anything, it's probably all of your predecessors. You're passing those mutations down the genetic line. Do you know what natural immunity is? It's antibodies that cause mutations. That's what, I mean, reproduction is from mutations. Everyone wants to blame everything outside of themselves and they don't realize that they're the ones holding all the cards. 
They're the ones that hold all the mutations and then how they react to their environment is based upon their belief system. And if you believe in death, then hey, then it doesn't matter. If you believe in life, then you understand what causes life and what sustains life and what keeps life. So you don't die. So hearsay is not proof. Hearsay is not proof at all. Because everybody will have their proof that they see based upon their belief system and you can't discount it. You cannot. So either you educate and then you and you pull back and you let people do what they do and you exemplify what you think is life. And if you can't exemplify it, then you have no business even talking about it. So this is for Krista McGinn who's saying that, oh yeah, you know, somebody got the tetanus shot, now they have a milk allergy. That antibody was already in their body. That antibody was already in their body. Okay? When you get when you get allergy tested, you will see the antibodies in your body. You'll see it. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Now, why? Now, how does someone reverse an allergy? How do they do that? Well, because they don't have as many antibodies that are so prevalent. What causes inflammation is when you have so many antibodies. So you could have inherited a milk antibody from your parents or from your grandparents. You can, I mean, let me just look up. Hold on. Let's Google. Milk allergy antibodies. Cow's milk allergy. An infant with suspected IgE mediated milk allergy will require testing for specific IgE to milk, a skin prick test, or blood test. It is likely that tolerance to extensively baked milk products will occur before the that to less well cooked milk. So what are they testing for? They're testing for the antibodies for that specific milk allergy. Okay. And what is it? So keep in mind that this type of test isn't completely accurate with detecting milk allergy. So correlation does not mean causation. Let me look up um, natural immunity. What is natural immunity? Let's see, antibodies. So milk allergy antibodies. So antibodies, milk. Let me see. So, so any type of allergy that you have, you can have allergies to like pollen. You have allergies to everything. So when food causes an allergic reaction, it isn't always easy to pinpoint what food is to blame. To evaluate whether or not your child has a milk allergy, your doctor may ask detailed questions about the sign and the symptoms. Perform a physical exam. Have you keep detailed diary of the foods that you eat or your child eats? Have you eliminated milk from your diet or your child's diet, elimination diet? And then have you add, then have you add back the food to see if it causes a reaction? So he or she may, may also recommend one or both of the following tests. Skin test is in this test, your skin is pricked and exposed to small amounts of proteins found in milk. If you're allergic, you'll likely develop a raised bump, a hive, at the test location in your skin. That's called inflammation. Allergy specialists usually are best equipped to perform and interpret allergy skin tests. Keep in mind that this type of test isn't completely accurate for detecting milk allergy. Blood test. A blood test can measure your immune system's response to milk by measuring the amount of immunoglobulin antibodies in your blood. So immunoglobulin E. But this test isn't completely accurate in, ident in identifying a milk allergy. Okay? So if your examination and test results can't confirm milk allergy, your, your doctor might administer an oral challenge in which you are fed different foods that may or may not contain milk in increasing amounts to see if you react to ones that contain milk. It's a good idea to have allergy tests administered by an allergist who's been trained to manage serious reactions. So, let's see. Um, so the only way to prevent an allergic reaction is to avoid milk and milk proteins. This can be difficult because milk is a common ingredient in many foods. So why are some 
why are some people allergic and some aren't? But some people, but the same people got the same. I mean, look, I had a tetanus shot a long time ago. I never got a food allergy. Do you see where I'm coming from with this? Is when someone wants to blame a tetanus shot or any kind of vaccine to a food allergy. And then I received a tetanus and many people have, and they don't have a milk allergy. So then what was, what was the reasoning? Well, Hey, maybe they already had it in their body and the environment and their, their practices. It wasn't that the vaccine did it. It usually is the cast and morphine that creates the end balance, which goes down the gut lining health. Well, you gotta be a little more clear on that, Maggie, but here's the thing. You, you, you probably inherited an antibody in some way, whether it's from a vaccine or something else that caused that inflammation. Now people have reversed that, those um, allergies through medical treatments. I've seen it. Somebody's, they, they, they've uh, reversed the peanut allergy where they can eat now certain kind of nuts because they've gone through some kind of therapy. Okay. And so you don't need to do that. All you got to do is just drink the J-juice, drink the J-juice, and that will keep those antibodies at bay, okay? And so you can blame everything that you want because I've received many different vaccines, even in the military, and I've received a lot of military vaccines, but yet I don't have food allergies. I had PMDD, but who knows? It could have been from the Norplant. It could have been from so many different things, so many factors, but yet for some reason, I never got all the allergies or all the different diseases or autism or anything from all the vaccines. So it does speak to what you've brought to the table. All of your allergies and all of your issues is based upon what you've inherited and your belief systems and practices all the way up to the point of when you triggered that disease. So you can't blame any one specific thing. There are so many factors. So yeah, correlation does not mean causation at all whatsoever. So hearsay is not proof at all. Hearsay is not proof. Imagine if you're in a court of law and you're trying to prove intention, you actually have to have the evidence to show what the intention was and this was the outcome. You've seen it like when you watch courtroom dramas, people say a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, I, I, you're trying to uh, um, say what a person's intention is. When someone says, oh yeah, I, I, I think, I believe that this is her intention was to do this. Someone says, no, that's hearsay. It's inadmissible. You know, um, I object when someone is speculating on why a person does something. When you speculate, you have zero proof. And when someone says something, they have zero proof. You can say it's, this, it's, it's because of this, it's because of that. It doesn't matter. You know, if you say it usually is a cast of morphine that creates the unbound, which goes down the gut. Well, whatever. I've been exposed to milk. I've been exposed to, and I eat milk on a very minimal basis, but I don't have an allergy. So someone that has an allergy has the antibody that caused this allergy, and they need to put that antibody at bay. They need to dilute the antibodies. They need to, they, they, they need... What people are doing to reverse the, ant, the, the their allergic reaction is they're using some kind of anti-inflammatory. What is the um, the treatments for milk and or nut allergies? Hold on, Google. Right, nut allergy treatments. Oh, yeah, adrenaline. So, well, yeah, that's for the epinephrine, okay, which is basically a hormone. You're giving a hormone. Um, let's see. I'm looking, let's see, what are they doing? Some kind of treatment. What are these treatments? What kind of therapies are they doing? Oh, a new oral immunotherapy. They are actually, 
what they're doing is they are creating, they're taking anti-inflammatories. The recent study tested the effectiveness of new oral immunotherapy for peanut allergy called AR101. AR101. What is AR101? Google. AR101. AI immune is an investigational oral biology, biologic drug designed to help protect patients from a severe allergic reaction in case they're actually exposed to a peanut. So it's not even that they, it keeps it at, it's not that it reverses it, they're just finding something to where the reaction won't be as, as severe. So it's a desensitization. So a, a, AI immune leads led investigational drug AR11 for peanut allergy in the final stage of clinical testing to support regulatory approval. Okay. So through our investigational characterized oral desensitization immunotherapy approach, which builds on a century of oral immunotherapy research, gradually increasing doses of AR11 would desensitize patients to peanut over a period of time, about six months. Afterwards, patients would continue to take maintenance doses of AR101 in order to maintain desensitization. So as an allergic, as an allergenic drug product designed for use as a peanut allergy treatment, AR101 upon regulatory approval would meet the stringent manufacturing and quality requirements established by regulatory authorities. So the AI immune failure treatment are investigational and are not FDA approved. So, What makes up AR101? So this is where you guys have to do your research. AR101 components or com I'll put components. Sparnopaceutical, okay, AR101 composition. AR101 composition. Once you know what the composition is and you know what it's doing, it's an immunotherapy, so they're energizing the immune system. Hmm. They, well, what they're doing, what they're doing, is throwing hormones at you because it's 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 probably blocking the prostaglandin hormone, the prostaglandin hormone, which aids in the healing process. Once you actually heal, then you could probably eat peanuts and it'd be fine. But when you're not healed and you have that mutation, because when you're doing an immunotherapy, it's because you are dealing with um, mitigating hormones to work to your favor because you're trying to stop the inflammation. So what is AR101? Liquid chroma enzyme linked to Im immunosorbent assay and its effort protein content. It's an enzyme. Liquid chromatography enzyme. Is peanut desensitization safe? It's suppressing allergic immune responses. It's suppressing the immune system so it doesn't go into a specific response. So it's still destroying the body, but it's not allowing you to have the symptoms to show that it's healing. It's what inflammation is, it's healing. It's blocking the prostaglandin hormone. Uh, well, what it is, is what it's doing, okay, it's, um, it's doing an immunotherapy. What it's doing, is, it's, anti, it's acting like an anti-inflammatory. It is, um, yeah, it's like an antihistamine. It's acting like, anti, it, it stops the prostaglandin hormone from creating inflammation so you don't get the symptoms, okay? That's what it's doing. And so it doesn't necessarily stop the allergy. It just stops the, the body from reacting, but it doesn't actually reverse that immune response. See, you know, when you have 
food allergies, it's because the body looked at it as a, as, as a weapon. It's a weapon against the body. We now have to reprogram the immune system so you're not having food weaponized against you. Now, this is the thing is when you have food weaponized against you, can you actually reverse it? And maybe you can't. Maybe there's no way to really reverse it and take away the antibody because you always have the antibody, but you can keep it at bay so it doesn't become a problem and turn into inflammation. So when you're drinking J juice and you have an antibody, let's say a peanut antibody, or you have um, – so here's the thing, Maggie Mae. I don't think you actually – if you have been this – is, this is my theory, and maybe you can tell me if you can see this possibility. So we have reverse food allergy down to the gut, eat, eat, eat said issue. It comes down to how it goes broken. It, the line of the gut made of lactate and water is not healthy. Well, here's the thing. Okay, let's, get, let's go deeper, Maggie Mae. Go deeper. If you have been exposed to an ant, if you had a food or something that somebody inherited, like an allergy of a specific food, whatever, however it came about, we're not even going to put the blame game. Okay, you'll never get rid of that antibody that causes inflammation. You never will. If you've been allergic to something, it's, it's part of you forever. But you can control the manifestation of it. If you're drinking J-juice on a massive level, you're always going to keep those antibodies at bay. So, yeah, you always have the milk antibody. You always have the peanut antibody. You always have the pollen antibody, whatever it is that you've been allergic to. But it will not affect you and cause inflammation because you're taking in nutrients to not only keep those antibodies at bay, but keep the hormones at bay, and then also keep the cancer candida at bay. So regardless of how you came into this world, you can still balance your system out. So whatever mutations that you've sustained were already fixed, but whatever antibodies that you have will never ever go away, but they can be held at bay. They can be controlled. That's what I'm thinking, Maggie, when it comes to allergies. I don't have a, a, a milk allergy. I don't have a nut allergy. But if somebody does, it means that somehow that food, whether it's inherited from the parents or from grandparents or somebody else through sex, okay, they inherited that antibody that caused then, when it gets out of control, an allergic reaction. So, yeah, you can blame the vaccines, but it could very well be a sex partner you had 50 years ago or 20 years ago that now caused this type of allergic reaction in the next generation. So it doesn't even matter where it came from. It's a matter of how do you keep the body in balance long enough to make sure that you keep the antibodies at bay, you keep the cancer at bay, and you keep the hormones well balanced and at bay. That's what it comes down to. I'm not trying to demonize milk. I'm not trying to demonize any specific food. It's understanding balance, but you have to get from way behind the eight ball to get all the way to the other side and then strike a balance, okay? Because I ate a lot of the mac and cheese last night and my body put it through, you know. Yeah, I understand, Maggie. I get it. That's your, what you're explaining is what it is that J-Juice does. I get it. So what anyways, but what is, I can handle mac and cheese. I can handle, but I can't handle on a, such an extent to where you know, it's going it, to, it's like, I'm not going to get allergic reaction, but my body says, hey, I'm going to get rid of this extra stuff that it, it doesn't belong. Okay. So, um, so when you said the body is able to handle the issues better than before, because yeah, I mean, the, the reason is because you're keeping a balance, Maggie. You're, if you're giving them jages or you're giving them other stuff that is now balancing out their hormones, balancing out their antibodies and balancing out their candida yeast, then you're not going to see reactions, allergic reactions. You're going to see finally those things, even if they're exposed to it, are not going to be a problem. But it's like anything. When you take anything that, that's relatively like too negative or, you know, uh, too negative, then you're going to balance out with positive. That's no different than anything else. It's, it's balance out the positive and the negative all the time and make sure you always strike a balance no matter what. So it doesn't matter what you bring to the table. It doesn't matter what you want to blame your mutations on, whether it's the 5G, the, the, the vaccines, the, um, the, the chemtrails, the pollutants. It doesn't matter what you blame it on. 
the fact is that we have now the capacity to balance it out and keep it at bay and fix the mutations. Our medium was corn allergy. You'll just about a year to stop visual symptoms. Yeah, okay, very good, Maggie. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so so corn, I mean, I could eat corn. I could eat milk. I could eat all these things. I've been vaccinated, okay? And I've been in the military. In the military, you get a shiz ton of vaccinations, way more than the average Joe. And I got it twice because I, I re-enlisted twice. And I realized that the military wasn't for me. <laughs> so I took on all those vaccines, and there was really no return on that investment. But that's okay. It was it was an experience that I got to uh, to to have, and and it made me who I am today. But but I didn't get all those crazy allergies that people that are people that are doing. And I and I actually left the military because of the anthrax shot. I would not get the anthrax shot. That's what the straw that broke the camel's back was the fact that I would not get the. So I said, I'm I'm done. The military, I'm done with. I can't do any more. And that was back before I was even anti-vax or anything like that. That was before I even knew about how bad vaccines. But I knew that they were that they the military does experiments on their 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 soldiers and their troops. So I wasn't going to be another experiment for them, even though I already did take on all the vaccines in the beginning. But I wasn't going to do the anthrax shots. Maybe I wanted to have a kid. I don't know. And I heard some people talk about that how the anthrax shot made them you know cause some issues and whatever, which I don't doubt. But again, correlation doesn't mean causation because not every person, every member gets those same types of um, situations. So yeah, it's what you bring to the table. So if you have already mutations and things that you brought to the table, then yeah, something else is going to then compound the issue. That's why we can't say that it's because of this. That's why we can't tell our friends, don't be this, don't be that, because you don't know what they bring to the table. And you don't know if, it, if that vaccine actually is going to help them get their kid on track and then maybe the kid does the J-juice in like five or ten years. So just do the J-juice and across the board, do the J-juice. Don't listen to people saying that, oh, yeah, you know, don't do this, don't do that. You know, just do the J-juice. That will level the playing field. So whatever you bring to the table, whether it's a milk allergy, a peanut allergy, a corn allergy, or any allergy, you will be able to fight it and then re and then keep it at bay because you'll always have that antibody. And then you'll keep your hormones at bay and you'll keep your candida cancer at bay. You'll fix the mutations and everybody's happy. Nobody is blaming anything on anybody. Because, yeah, you know, your sexual partners will expose you to antibodies. Your relatives will expose you to antibodies. That's the natural immunity everybody talks about when it comes to breastfeeding. You're passing down, passing down mutations from one generation to another. And then you want to blame the environment. Where's your responsibility? Okay, so, so this is almost like a get out of jail free for car for anybody out there. I mean, if, you, if you're a prostitute out there and you, and you want to change your ways, do the J-juice. Fix the mutations from all that exposure to however many Johns that you've had in the course of your career. If you, you know, if, if you've been exposed to so many pathogens at war, do the J-juice. I mean, and then, you know, eventually when you do the J-juice, you're not going to want to be promiscuous. You're going to find a more honorable profession where you're not putting yourself in danger every single day. You may not, when you do the J-Juice, you may not want to ever re-enlist ever again because you're going to find a different way to make money that's not going to be, you know, in violence and weapons. And the J-Juice is just going to level the playing field. It really is. So it won't matter what it is that you did back then. You're going to, first of all, you're going to, you're going to pay the piper for a minute. When you deal with the healing symptoms, you're paying the piper. You're taking accountability for things that you, yeah, you didn't have control over and things that you did have control over. Somebody has to pay the piper, but for a minute. And then you get through the fire, and then finally it all is calm and peaceful. But you have to pay the piper first. You can't, you, you know, everybody has to pay their dues. Nothing's for free in life. Good health isn't for free. Like, literally, good health isn't for free. You just can't acquire it. You've got to you got to um, be accountable for the mistakes that you made as well as your ancestors made. You got you, you got to. And if you don't want to pay the piper, you don't want to be accountable for your part in this, then I guess you'll be on that death trajectory and then there you go. 
the devil will take his due because you never took accountability right Ellen yeah believe me when I tried to eat all that mac and cheese yesterday I I paid the piper last night I really did and then I'm like okay never again okay body and never again <laughs> So do the J juice. Forget the politics. Forget the hearsay. Forget all of it. Do the J juice. All of your arguments will then finally melt away. And you can finally focus on yourself and your family and then your career and whatever else you want to pursue. That's going to be law abiding and peaceful and helpful to your community. Because that's what it comes down to, right? Is productivity and keeping the peace. That's it. Nothing else. You're not imposing or legislating or being legalistic about anything. And then you'll have your boundaries and you will channel your energies in perspective places that will serve you so you're not having your boundaries being overstepped all the time. And that's what it comes down to is understanding the boundaries in your body and the boundaries of your life so you're not always being run roughshod over all the time by people who have absolutely no boundaries, who are mutated. That's why we have law and order, so that we don't have the mutated people go and take advantage of other people that are not as mutated, or mutated even worse. Okay? We're not trying to create victims and perpetrators. We're trying to create people who just want to keep society peaceful. And that means that do the J-Juice. Because then you won't be so bitter against your exes. You won't be so bitter against people that have crossed you. Because you realize they're coming from a mutated place. And then you have to show your boundaries. And you have to get rid of the triggers in your life. Because it's not serving you. And it's causing more harm than good. And you start making your life more peaceful so you can actually heal. Do the J-Juice so you can actually heal. So you're not on that bandwagon of hating somebody or something all the time. So you're not obsessing over what you should have done or could have done. 10 years ago okay there's no peace when you keep obsessing and looping in the same arguments year after year after year when you look at your timeline what does it tell you and you when you look at yourself from a from an outside perspective what are you putting out there are you putting out hatred and anger and war or are you educating and peaceful with a little bit of passion and a lot of you, you look at your timeline, you know you come from hate. You know you come from anger. You know you come from a lot of violence. And it shows. So you got to up the J-Juice. If you don't up the J-Juice, then guess what? You're, you're no different than the people that you're railing against. Absolutely no different. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. <sighs>